my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. And this is another proof in my series on proofs for differential calculus. And in this proof, we're going to prove that the derivative of a constant times x is just the constant itself. And a little note before I get too far into this, um, a lot of these proofs that I've been doing as of late are kind of the entry level proofs. They're, they're very low level proofs. I don't expect any, them to be mind chattering or anything like that. Um, but these are levels of proofs that easily, almost they're too, almost too low level for an exam. Honestly, your instructor may not want to include these on an exam. They might choose something that's a little more challenging. Um, but they're great demonstrations of uh, the uh, limit definition of a derivative. As always, our prerequisite knowledge when we're talking about derivatives, we have to know limits and the limit definition of a derivative. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this proof. As with most proofs, we start by just saying let, uh, and then we'll go ahead and let our function be c times x. And also, you know what, uh, I might actually add one more thing to our prerequisite knowledge here. I'm going to uh, say that we already know that the derivative with respect to x of, a const of, of x itself is equal to 1. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because of the fact that we've, I've proven that in the previous video and now I'm going to use that here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and find out what f prime is. And in fact, to keep my language full here, I should say then f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And if you want a kind of a long-winded description of the interpretation of that, you can look at a previous video that I've done. Uh, I think it was the last video I did uh, where I, I was long-winded about that. When I plug x plus h into the function, I get c times x plus h. And of course, from that, I want to subtract f of x. f of x itself is just going to be c times x. So green means the first function, blue means the second function, and of course underneath all that is just h. Okay, This is kind of weird notation here by the way because it looks as though I am saying c of x plus h, but it's c times x plus h. And so if we multiply things out, we get the following. The limit as h approaches 0 of c x uh, plus ch minus cx. And by the way, uh, there was another option I could have done here. Since we know quite a bit about limits, I could have factored out the c already, but I'm waiting till the very end. Uh, so this has plenty of things that cancel. Well, not plenty, a couple things that cancel. So we have a beautiful ch over h. The h is canceled beautifully. And I get the limit as h approaches zero of c. c is a constant, uh, which I should have sta stated honestly at the beginning of my proof. Uh, I should have said where c is a constant. Uh, where c is constant. That's kind of an important thing to mention within a proof. You want to be as uh, verbose as possible uh, without being overly uh, wordy, which I tend to be. Uh, anyways, this is a limit as h approaches 0 of c. There's no h in there, so this just turns into c. And if you look at our original claim, the derivative with respect to x of c of x, or cx, is equal to the constant c. And that's actually the result we get. f prime is just going to be c. Yeah.